Good evening, everyone. Welcome to In the Blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman. Get ready to have a good time on tonight. Yes, we are so excited to be with you guys on this evening. And I tell you, we're going to have an awesome, awesome time. Uh, we've just been just working on focus, really just trying to stick with focus. We're coming to the end of the year, and especially during this season, this is uh, – in particular, a time where a lot of people lose focus. Yes. There are so many different things that go on during this time, uh, during the holiday season. You know, people are dealing with uh, financial situations, uh, emotional situations, spirit, whatever, all kinds of situations people are dealing with. And consequently, you'll find, especially during this time, that a lot of people are just losing focus. They, they're losing sight on what the the main thing is, you know, there's a saying that let the main thing be the main thing. And so for so many people, sweetheart, I'm finding out that they're just losing focus. Uh, they don't know uh, which way to go. They don't know what to do. Things aren't quite working out the way that they thought it was going to work out or the way they anticipated it working out. And so they find themselves just going astray, giving up, throwing in the towel. But I found out this, one of the key ingredients and elements, because we're, we're in the blender, mm -hmm. and so everything we share are what we call bling, bling ingredients, not ingredients, but bling ingredients. Mm -hmm. And so those are things that we find necessary to put into your blender to give it that flavor that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. That flavor could be peace. That flavor could be joy. That flavor could be love. It could be long suffering. It could be patience. All of those are fruits. Those are fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And so those are the things that give that flavor, that taste to your relationship, to your family dynamic. And so we're going to just for the rest of the year, we're going to be just dropping them in so that you guys can properly blend them into your family and get out of that, out of that blended family, out of that dynamic, everything that. God was intending to get out of because there's a purpose for your family. There's a purpose. Scripture says it like this. To everything, there's a time, a season, and a purpose. There's a purpose for it. There's a purpose for you guys coming together. There's a purpose for you saying, I do, I will. There's a purpose for those vows that you stood to uh, commit your life to. There's a purpose for you bringing two systems together, making one. Mm -hmm. There's a purpose to all of that. And so you have to stay focused. But one of those ingredients that the ingredients that I was going to um, talk about was gratitude. Too often, baby, I'm finding out that we aren't as grateful as we ought to be. Yeah, we aren't as grateful. We we live in a society that things are just so expected. You should have a good job. You should have a nice home. You should drive a nice car. You should have nice clothes. All these shoulds that we have grown accustomed to having and having our life with and not really knowing that you've lost gratitude. Mm -hmm. You know how easy it is to lose a family because you're not grateful. <laughs> it happens all the time, every day, every minute, every second of the hour. Families are falling apart. People are walking away from this thing because they're not grateful. I don't care what your friends doing, your friends are doing. I don't care what type of relationship your parents may have had. I don't care what type of relationship your friends may have had or your siblings may have. I don't care what type of relationship anybody that you know have. Be grateful for what you have. Because at the end of the day, you have everything that you need to be a success. You have every single thing, the two of you, the two of you have everything that's needed to be the next whoever. Because I don't even want to start throwing out names because when it comes down to names, Brandon and Matt are not the best names I can name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm not going to throw out a name as a couple diminishing who God said we are in the earth. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some awesome couples that we can glean from, 
Absolutely. There's some awesome men and women of God that we can glean from. There's some awesome family members that we can glean from. But I'm not throwing their names out because Brandon and Madeline are who he set up for this time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just thankful and grateful just to participate in this. Yeah. Because most people didn't give in the blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman six months. <laughs> they didn't give us six weeks, six days, six years. Here we are almost 23 years later thriving. I mean, on top. And so that generates a level of gratitude. We should listen to this, guys. We should attempt to be consciously aware of the many wonderful little events we are involved in within this present time. You should be consciously aware, man, make, make it a, 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 a practice. Make it a practice to be consciously aware of the many wonderful little events. Because when you, when you are aware of those little events, those big events, man, it, they just become natural. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for you, they don't seem as big. Why? Because you celebrate the little. Right. You're celebrating the little. If you walk out right now and you give a person, watch this, sweetie. This is how you could tell if you're grateful or not. If I give you a $100 bill, mm -hmm. would you have the same smile? the same gratitude, the same thankfulness as you would if I give you that hundred dollars in all nickels? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might not want to count them all, but... <laughs> no, really, think but about yeah. it. Yeah, think it's about still hundred dollars. It. It's still a hundred dollars. But the mere fact is, if I give it to you in a hundred dollar bill, you'll look at it one way, but if I give it to you in all nickels, you might look at it in a whole nother way. The sad part about that is you're missing out on the blessing that comes along with that or the increase that comes along with that gift because you're not grateful for the nickels. You have put now a, um, you put a, uh, uh, you've now elevated the dollar bill. Mm -hmm. You've given that more weight, although it spends the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody's turning down a hundred dollars nickels. I don't care. They might don't want to count it, but a hundred dollars is a hundred dollars. Yeah. And so, but if you can't make a conscious attempt or be consciously aware of the many wonderful little events that you are involved in in this present time. You'll never be open for the big events to take place. You'll never be open. There are some things that as a couple, you're going to have to just be thankful for the little things. Be thankful for the little things. Be okay. He might don't clean up, but he might fix the bed. Be grateful for that. That's a start. That's a little thing. Make that make that little event seem so big that now it will encourage him to do more. Yeah. It, it, appreciate the small things. Appreciate the small things. Appreciate the small things. She go, wait, because, what you gonna say? Because some things that may seem small to one person may seem big to somebody else. No, say say that again. Sometimes some things that may seem small to some people may seem big to somebody else. That's right. Because it's all relative. Yep. It's all relative. And, and this is what we've learned over the past 23 years. It's relative. There are some things that I do that I may think is huge. Madeline might not think is that huge. There are some things that she does that she think is huge. I might not think is that huge. But why? Because it's all relative. It's relative to the person that's doing it. What will allow us to keep benefiting from that is to understand that and now be grateful for them even doing that. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> I'm going to say this. <laughs> but this one right here, 
man, it was, let, let me say this. It was a time she didn't want to kiss up on me. It was a time where it, what? No, go ahead. Okay, I'm just all right, I'll get okay. I'm probably no. gonna have to comment afterwards. No, you're not, because there, there was a, <laughs> there was there was a time where you didn't just want to do what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. There was there was a time in our relationship. There was a time in our marriage where the things you do now weren't commonplace. Mm -hmm. The things you want to do now weren't commonplace, mm -hmm. but now they are. The trick to this is, in order for me to keep doing that, I have to develop an attitude of gratitude. Because if I don't develop an attitude of gratitude, eventually the wanting to do certain things will subside. Because nobody wants to continue to want to do something and feel like what they're doing is unappreciative. Nobody. And so in order to get out of this relationship, what you've been designed to get out of it, there has to be a level of gratitude. You have to be grateful for the little events that you involved in in this present time. Life is now. Mm -hmm. You're so worried about next month and next year, in the next five years, in the next 10 years, you're not even maximizing now. That's why scripture picks it up like this. When scripture talks about faith, when the Bible, when the Bible defines faith, it says now. now faith. <laughs> it says now faith, not tomorrow faith, not next year faith, not next month faith, not five years away from here faith, not 10 years away from here faith. It says now faith. Why? Because now is the present. Yeah. Now is the most important time that you have. Apostle says it like this. Something happens, time, time passes, pass, and something happens. Something happens is now. Mm -hmm. But this is the awesome thing about that. Time pass is now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> something happened again is now. Because every single time one of those three things are going on is right now. Absolutely. Oh, y'all not hearing what I'm telling you. Every single time one of those three things are transpiring is now. Now faith. Now. And so you're going to have to understand that life is now and it can and should be enjoyed. Not only can it, can it be enjoyed, it should be enjoyed. I don't care how bleak, how... Uh, Great things may seem, man, you can enjoy life now. Because at the end of the day, there's always people somewhere that's looking at your situation that wish they were there. They wish they had your hand, man. I'm telling you, listen to what I'm telling you. There's, there's always some people that are looking at you guys right now. They're looking at your blended family. They're looking at how you communicate. They're looking at how you, you're interacting with your children. They're looking at how you're doing things in business and on your job. They're looking at your whole life and they're wishing they had it. You, on the other hand, you're not even grateful for what you got, but you want more. There's laws, there's universal laws, guys. Listen, there's universal laws that happen every single day that you are going to have to participate in. Matter of fact, you're participating in them whether you know it or not. And when you're not grateful, it's like a mat. Gratefulness and ungratefulness are both magnets. Yeah. Gratefulness and ungratefulness are both magnets. When you're grateful, you draw things to you yeah. that will generate more gratefulness. Absolutely. When you ungrateful, what happens? It's gonna draw ungratefulness to you. It's gonna draw things that make you feel it ungrateful. It's going to draw things that make you hate your life. Why? Because you're not even thankful and grateful for what you have. I always say this to my wife. I've always said this 23, 23 years. I said, babe, I want to have what people think they see us have. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Because you got, you, got you got to clarify that. This is what I mean. 
if you think you see a blessed marriage, I want the blessed marriage. Right. If you think you see a great relationship, I want the great relationship. Mm -hmm. If you think you see an awesome relationship with our children, I want that awesome relationship with our children. Why? Because I don't want what you see to be false. Right. It's so devastating, baby, when you think you see something and it's not what you see. Mm -hmm. That's one of the most devastating things. That's why you always hear people say stuff like, oh, that's fake. That's fake. That ain't real. Yeah, y'all just don't know the truth. Why? Because what they thought they were seeing, they saw it wasn't real. Mm -hmm. And so consequently, now their whole attitude has changed around that. Why? Because there was an expectation that was laid out. Right. When you see us, you, there's an expectation. That's right, uh, cuz. You, when you see us, there's an expectation. There's an expectation that's laid out. And it is vitally important, guys. Listen, it's vitally important that you fulfill that expectation. Mm -hmm. Nobody could put pressure on you. Nobody can put pressure on you to be a success. Nobody could put no, nobody can put pressure on you to rule and reign in this earth. Why? Because you all were already designed to rule and reign. <laughs> you were already designed to be a success. You just don't know that. You just don't. This thing is is set up like this. It's set up like, remember, and I know some of y'all still do this, but remember Publishing Clearinghouse? Oh, yeah. Remember Publishing Clearinghouse? They would send all the magazines and all that stuff to your house and say, if you if you order this and you order that and you do this and you do that, then then you you possibly can win $5 million or you possibly can win $10 million. Mm -hmm. And so, but watch this. What most people don't understand is what transpires before they knock on that door. Before they knock on that door to tell that individual on the other side of the door that they are the publishing clearinghouse winners, they've already written a check. Mm -hmm. They've already set up things to ensure that they are no longer broke or that they are more successful or more richer or more wealthier than they were before they knocked on the door. Mm -hmm. The crazy part about that is even before they knocked on that door, that person was wealthy. Mm -hmm. already wealthy. They were already wealthy. They were already rich. The problem with that here in lies is they did not know it. Mm -hmm. They're coming with me now. We're here right now as publishing clearinghouse letting you know you already on top. <laughs> you already wealthy. You're already rich. Your family is already blessed. You guys are already on top. We're just knocking on the door to let you know, here's the check, baby. <laughs> you can cash this. This is good. No, we did not know how wealthy we were in our relationship until we heard the knock on the door. Guess what? But it was already there. It was, it was already there. And so we just want to let you know, man, in order to experience that, you have to be grateful. Take the time. Take, listen, this is an assignment. Take the time today to make a list. Make a list. Write down 11 of your loveliest things, people not included, people not counted, of the things that you are grateful for. Take the time out, man, to write. Because when you write these things down, they now become living. Mm -hmm. You see them. Because you, in your mind, you can say, I'm grateful for this, I'm grateful for that, I'm grateful for this, I'm grateful for that. You can do that all day long. But when you got that thing written down, then guess what? Now it has life. And you can go back and look at it every day. It's something you can physically see daily or all day long. Because sometimes thinking things in your mind, you might be quoting things. But you may not remember everything that you said or everything that you saw in your mind. So when you write it, you can visually see it. And, and, and when you write and visually see it, what would that cause you to do? To receive it more. 
What is there any? Is there any? Meaning, like, if I see it, mm -hmm. the more I see it, the more I believe it. Not that I don't already believe it, mm -hmm. but when you constantly seeing something, it becomes more and more a part of you. It becomes more and more a part of you. And watch, watch this, because because you know we were people, and so Scripture picks it up like this: write the vision and make it plain. Watch this, that they may run that read it. And so when you write down these things that you're grateful for, when you write down these things, I mean, when you write down these 11 things that you're grateful for, that's vision. And it's plain. Now you have something identifiable that you're grateful for. There's something there that puts a level of gratefulness in your spirit, man, that says, man, I am so grateful for this. I am so grateful for that. But what happens in that being grateful is now you're putting movement to it. Because they that may, they, so they that read it may run. Mm -hmm. Write the vision, make it plain. Why? So that those that read it can run. Mm -hmm. There's an action that comes along with gratefulness that will require you writing this thing down. Because now it will cause you to move in that direction. There are some things that you that you may or may not be grateful for that you need to put on that list. Why? Because it will cause you to run in that direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it will cause you to now run in that direction. Why? Because you've made it plain. Mm -hmm. You said to yourself, you know what? You may not be, you may not have been grateful or that grateful for this, but you will be. Why? Because it's on that list. Now it's purposeful. Mm -hmm. We have to be purposeful in what we're doing. We have to be purposeful. You will find that making such a list will quiet your mind. Man, when you make that list, it's going to quiet your mind. Because now your mind not all over the place. It's focused. You say it helps keep you focused on that particular thing. It helps keep you focused on that particular thing. You're not going all over the place. It relieves tension. Mm -hmm. Because there are some things in life that you will um, incur, that you will go through, that will, that will bring tensions. Yeah. And so having that list, man, it will relieve tensions. And probably help you focus on what you're presently doing that is enjoyable. It'll probably help you. Why? Because now you're focused. Now you've got some direction to it. It's called living. <laughs> this is what this call. Gratitude is called living. When you're grateful, man, you can live. Yeah. When you're great, watch this. Genesis said this. In the beginning, God said, God said, God said. Then he saw. Mm -hmm. Then he said. Then he said. Then he made. Then he said. Then he said. Then he saw. Then after all of that, he looked. And the Bible says he was grateful. <laughs> he was pleased. He felt great about everything that transpired. Because in the beginning, the earth was without form and void. It was no, it was empty. It wasn't producing. And many of you right now, you're looking at the beginning. You're looking at a situation right now, and it seems void. It seems it's empty. empty. <laughs> it's without form. Has no shape, no direction, no character, no anything to it. Now you're going to have to begin to open up your mouth and say, let there be life. I Listen, I'm t I did it. When I thought this one didn't love me, when I thought this one was like, man, I'd be glad when he go, <laughs> I spoke life. And I'm not saying that's what she said. That's what I thought. Because that's what I saw. I looked out upon my earth and it was dark. <laughs> it was without form and void. It was empty. And I began to speak to that thing, man. I began to declare. I began to decree some things. This is what I wanted out of it. And guess what? Because I'm made in this image and in this likeness, my word don't come back void. It doesn't come back empty. 
It doesn't come back without his assignment being fulfilled. It accomplished that what it pleases and it prospered to the things where to has been sent. So I sent my word out. I sent it to prosper. Mm -hmm. I sent it to prosper and then bring me back what, it, what I commanded it to do. And because of that, now you guys are witnessing in the blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman. Because yeah. it was almost in the trash can. <laughs> 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 it was almost in the trash can with Brandon and Madeline Hyman. But because a vision, because of gratefulness, man, it became in the blender. Gratitude bestows reverence, allowing us to encounter everyday epiphanies. Man, every day you should be encountering an epiphany, like an aha moment. Every day when you become grateful, Every day, man, you're having moments of who. And those moments transcend of all that change forever how we experience life of the life of this world. It'll transcend. When you have those aha moments, man, it's like we've had some moments together that's just been like, wow, that was special. Man, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Wait, what would you guys say about that? You're right. We have had some moments that just be like, oh, wow. Wow. Just, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, wow. it's not, not much more you can say than that. Yeah. But just like, wow. Like, and, we, and we sit and we look at each other like, wow. Did you just see what just happened? Did you see what just transpired? And we constantly, we, we talking every day. What, and let me say, for a sidebar, Start having family meetings. You guys should be meeting with each other at least once a month. Mm -hmm. We do it on the 15th. Well, our ministry Amen. does it on the 15th. Mm -hmm. We do it almost every day. <laughs> I mean, literally, we're meeting almost every day. At least five days a week we're meeting. A, a, about some area of our life and our family and and what we are, our, our, our mission, our goals, we're meeting. That's just something that we do. But if, if that's too much for you guys, pick a day. Pick a day once a month, man, that you're going to set aside to meet, to write some things down, to, to come in agreement on some things, to, 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 to put uh, goals and, and missions and, and all these other things in front of you guys so that now there's a vision to go for. Mm -hmm. And not, not only will it, will it benefit you, but it'll benefit the millions of others that are waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Romans says the whole earth is groaning and waiting in manifestation. They're waiting on you. You can't give up. You can't throw in the towel. You can't walk away. You can't say I quit. You can't say I'm done. You can't do any of that because the earth is waiting on you. There are people right now on your Facebook page waiting for you to be a success. They're waiting for your marriage to strive. They're waiting for your relationship to be rebuilt and be restored. Why? Because you are the only picture of success that they have. When you understand what's been placed in your hands, man, we understand what's been placed in our hands. I tell my wife all the time, man, listen, I love the composition of a woman, but I'm a, I'm a man. I understand that every woman has the same things. Some are just bigger. Some are just smaller. Some are just lighter. Some are just darker. It's still the exact same thing. Be not deceived, man. Don't get so caught up on all of that stuff because guess what? Things change. <laughs> Something happens. Time passes, and something happens. Things change. What was perky this year ain't going to be perky 10 years from now. <laughs> what was whatever way for this guy with all that, all this buff and all that stuff? Guess what? That stuff changed. It take work to keep that going. And we know, we know, we know if you ain't putting in that type of work, you're not keeping that. 
You're not keeping that. And so gratitude, man, it bestows a reverence. There's such a reverence that gratitude will bestow upon you. And it would allow you to encounter everyday epiphanies. Listen to what I'm saying, man. You want these things to happen. You want those aha moments because it'll make you look at each other in a whole nother light. It's so disappointing when other people can look at you, look at you and have an aha moment, and you can't even look at yourself and have an aha moment. That's disappointing. That's disappointing when people can look at my wife and have an aha moment, but I don't look at my wife and have an aha moment. Or people can look at me and have an aha moment, but she don't look at me and have an aha moment. That's disappointing. Mm -hmm. The reason why those things aren't happening is because you're not grateful. I tell this one right here all the time, man. I am so grateful for her. I am so grateful for her. Uh, listen, guys, let me say it again. I am so grateful for her because I am a piece of work. work. <laughs> <sighs> I am a hand oh. full. <laughs> I am a wow. piece of work yeah. and I am a hand full. And I'm telling you guys, I'm grateful, man, because you no, know, no, nobody can put up with me. Let me let me tell you why I'm grateful. Because there's times I don't even want to put up with me, and she's putting up with me. <laughs> you know, you know that is something, man. When you don't even want to put up with yourself, and sometimes I be doing some stuff I'm like, dude, you need to get a grip. Like, what is wrong with you, bro? Check yourself. You're tripping. And she right there, right by my side, pushing me on. But watch this. That develops growth. Because mm -hmm. we talked about gratitude and now we're talking about growth. Mm -hmm. No one ever, listen, watch this. No mm -hmm. one ever arrives. We are always arriving. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a trick, guys, and I, I, I got to expose that trick. No one ever arrives. We are always arriving. The moment you think you arrive is the moment you begin to fall. Scripture says it like this. When a man thinketh he is something, when he is nothing, yep. he deceives himself. Mm -hmm. And too many people, baby, they deceiving themselves because they think they arrive. I don't care if you're living in a million-dollar home. I don't care if you're driving a million-dollar car. I don't care if you got a million dollars in the bank. You still have not arrived. You are arriving, but you have not arrived. Why? Because there's so many other things in your life and areas in your life that you can build upon, that you can perfect, that you can take to another level. You can take to another dimension. Mm -hmm. And so you just got to understand no one ever arrives. Whatever it took to get you to the point you're at will not be sufficient to keep you there. What did I just say, babe? You got to say that again. Whatever it took, mm -hmm. whatever it took to get you to that, to point, that point, your act will not be sufficient to keep you there. It won't. No it won't. One ever arrives. <laughs> it will not. Listen, guys, <laughs> whatever it took to get you to that point that you at, it just won't be sufficient. It will not be enough to keep you there. It will not. And that's, that's why you can't just go off for one act. Yeah. There always have to be acts. If it wasn't so, the Bible wouldn't even have a book of acts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I make myself laugh sometimes. No, but really, the Bible wouldn't even have a book of acts if it wasn't necessary for acts to always be happening. You can't just have one act and think you're there. Mm -hmm. You have to constantly be doing things to build upon. Mm -hmm. There are some things that she did early on in our marriage relationship that don't work for me no more. There are some things that I did early on in our marriage relationship doesn't work for her anymore. Guess what? There is an ev evolving that takes place. There's a growth that takes place 
And we can't just be good enough for that one thing. Yeah. Because that one thing is not going to be sufficient to take us down the road. It's not. And many people are deceiving themselves because they think that one thing is good enough. They think that one thing is good enough. You're either improving your position. Or you're sliding backward. Say that, say that again, baby. Or you're sliding backward. No, you're either oh, what? You're either improving your position or you're sliding backward. You're either improving your position or you're sliding backwards. It's just as simple as that. You either, and let, me, let me say it again. You're either improving your position or you're, or you're sliding, sliding backwards. backwards. Every month, I'm doing push-ups. I do a push-up challenge every single month. I'm not going to get y'all. But that little 22 push-up stuff, I'm not going to get you. I'm going to behave myself on that. Please do. Yes. But I felt that. But every month, I'm doing push-ups. Why? Because if I stop doing push-ups, my body's going to go backwards. My body's going to go backwards. If you stop pushing, guess what's going to happen? Your body is going to go backwards. What do you mean? Your relationship, your marriage, your relationship with your children, your business, all those things that require you pushing, once you stop pushing, they're going to go backwards. They just that's 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 a law. That's a universal law. Like it or not, it happens. Yeah. What goes up? What must come down. What goes up must come down. They call that the law of relativity. Isaac Newton. What goes up must come down. And so yeah. keep that in mind. How often we have watched successful people fall from grace after reaching what they call the pinnacle of their successful career. Wow. How, how many times, man, have you watched, watch this. I said it that way because marriage is a career. This is a work. Marriage is made easy, man. Yes. Marriage isn't easy. It's made easy. You're going to have to put some work into this thing. To make it easy. To make it easy. You're gonna have to put some work. You're gonna have to put some 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 sweat equity, some sweat equity into this to get out of it everything that you want to get out of it. Mm -hmm. If you don't grind, if you don't knuckle down, if you don't put some work into this, you will not get from it what has been designed to give you. You won't. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how much you fast. I don't care how much you throw oil on yourself looking all greasy. I don't care how much you do all of that stuff. If you ain't going to put no work in this thing, you will not get from it what you're supposed to get from it. You won't get from it. Because it's designed to give. Give and it shall be given. That's a universal law. Scripturally telling you this is how you get give. How do you get give? How do you get give? How do you get give? Mm -hmm. Watch this. God had love. He wanted love. How did he get love back? He gave. Mm -hmm. He gave his only begotten son. He wanted love. He is love and he wanted love. But how did he get love back? He gave. Mm -hmm. In order to get, you're going to have to give. That's why tithing is so important. Sowing seeds are so important. Man, millionaires got, Billy, they got this thing down. They understand this law of that sowing of sowing and reaping. They don't reap and sow, they sow and reap. Yep. See, y'all got this thing mixed up, man. You so, you, you been, you been misinformed. I want to say it that way without being insulting. You really been misinformed to think that you're gonna reap and sow. No, you sow then reap. The sowing comes before the reaping. But if you sow right, you'll reap so much that the reaping will overtake the sowing if you do it properly. Mm -hmm. We need to keep pursuing, man. Keep on doing and looking for new and better ways to grow and expand beyond the position we have reached. 
You got to. You got to. Listen, put this in that blender. You got to keep pursuing. Keep doing and looking for new and better ways to grow and expand beyond the position that you've reached. I know where you guys at right right, right now may be great. Man, y'all might be sitting on top of the world, just, just loving life. But guess what? Keep pursuing. There's always a, another level. Mm-hmm. There's always another dimension to this thing that you can that you can enjoy. Absolutely. There's all there's there's always a place in this life that you can get to that you were not in previously. But you got to keep pursuing it. You got to understand that not only is it there, but it's yours for the taking. <laughs> not only is it there, baby, but it's yours for the taking. Say what? Grab it and run with it. Huh? Grab it and run with it. Grab it and run with it. It's yours. Why not grab it and run with it? Mm -hmm. It's yours, man. It is yours. It's yours for the taking. Absolutely. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open to you. Guess what? It's yours for the taking. All you got to do is grab it. Grab it and run with it. You want that blessed family? You want that blessed marriage, that blessed relationship? Guess what? Grab it and run with it. Stop comparing what you think other people have and what you think other people are acquiring and what you think other people can bring to the table. Nobody can bring to the table what you bring to the table. I don't care how many celebrities that's doing whatever. I don't care how many well-known people that's doing whatever. Nobody can do what we do. And I will not minimize me for anybody. My wife will tell you that. I don't care who you are. I'm not minimizing myself for you. Too many of y'all right now, you're minimizing yourself because you think what other people are doing, you think what other people have are, is better than what you have. It's not. The only difference between them and you is their understanding of who they are and going to get what they're supposed to have. That's the only difference, man. And when you begin to realize who you are, you can have what you want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can have it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Aretha said, what you want, baby, I got it. What you need, you know I got it. All I'm asking is a little respect. Watch this. All, all life is asking is a little respect and gratefulness. It's, it's a little understanding, appreciation. If you can give life that, guess what? What you want, life has it. What you need, life has it. It will give it to you if you just reach out and grab it. How do you reach out and grab it? Be grateful. Be thankful. Be appreciative, man. Know that you can have more. Know that you are somebody. Know that regardless of what things look like and how things feel and how things seem, regardless of any of that, man, you are somebody. You are this earth's answers. You are this. The earth is looking for answers. And guess who is waiting on? You. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, me. <laughs> that's, what the, that's what the earth is waiting on. The earth is waiting on you, man. You, woman. The earth is waiting on you guys. And when you stop fighting each other and start fighting for each other, guess what? You can get an earth what it's been waiting on. There's so many people, man. They're just waiting. They're waiting on you guys to come back together. It's it's folks that's watching us right now, man. Y'all need to mend some fences. Y'all need to fix some things. This is one of the things I had to do. I did this over 12 years ago. I had to go to each and every one of my family members, meaning my wife and my children, and apologize for my behavior, my viewpoints, my everything that was counterproductive to the growth of our family. I had to go to everybody individually, from my oldest daughter to my middle daughter, to my youngest daughter, to my son, 
to my wife. I had to go to everybody individually and apologize for me. I couldn't be concerned about what I thought they did or how I felt they behaved or how I thought they did whatever. My response. Responsibility. Say that again, I'll hear you. Your response is your responsibility. My response was my responsibility. I'm responsible for my response. I review, I was responsible for my response. So I had to begin to move and act like I listen. If you're gonna say you're a man, be a man. If you're gonna say you're a woman, be a woman. Own up to it and then move from it. Don't act like you didn't do certain things. Don't act like you didn't participate in certain things to make things where they are. Okay, acknowledge it, ask for forgiveness, turn away from it and move on. Yeah. It's just that simple. Yeah. You don't have to stay there. You don't have to ponder there. You don't have to beat yourself up because of it. Man, guess what? You are not the first person to make a bad decision or choice. You're not the only person and you will not be the last. That's right. As long as the earth remain, it's going to be a bad choice. Yeah. <laughs> as long as the earth remain, scripture says seed time and harvest. But yeah, those are, those are bad choices too. Mm -hmm. People are going to make bad decisions and bad choices. Okay, that's done. So what, man? Okay, we there. We I can't do nothing about that. Yeah. What are we going to do now? Mm -hmm. Okay, I know I messed up. I know I blew it. But we still got a whole lot more life ahead of us. Mm -hmm. We still got a whole lot more life ahead of us. Mm -hmm. I, we were just talking a couple months ago, and I thought about something that literally blew my mind. And what literally blew my mind is in three years, we will be married half of my life. <laughs> half of my life, I would have been married. That is in three years. In three yeah, years. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is mind blowing to me that I've been married that long. Not surprising, but mind blowing that in three years, I will be married almost, I will be married, no, half of my life. In three years, taking action, moving, taking steps, understanding, acknowledging, changing, building, growing, being humble, being grateful, being thankful, understanding that it's not all about you, that, that people are, are dependent upon you, that, that you have the power to change lives. When you understand those things, man, it will make you change. Mm -hmm. It will make you want to change because you want to assist in the growth and maturation of others. Yep. You want to do that. Many major corporations, many major families, mm -hmm. some of which we consider institutions, have literally disappeared because of their mistaken belief that they have arrived. Many families, and that's why that's why we fight so hard, man. This is our second marriage, but divorce is not an option. It's not an option because we realize and we've seen many major marriages, many major families, which you can call a corporation because it's a business. business. <laughs> you got stockholders. Guess what? You got stock in your marriage. You're a stockholder. It's a corporation. It's a business. They have crumbled. We've seen them literally disappear because of their mistaken belief that they have arrived. They thought they was dead. They stopped doing those things to advance in life. We got some buddies, man, and we love them dearly, and I don't want to drop names, but, man, every week, I want to say Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday, every Tuesday, they out right now dating. <laughs> every Tuesday, they're on a date night. Y'all hear what I said? Every Tuesday, those cats are on date nights. Been married 20, 20 years, right? 20 years? 20 years, 21 years? 21, 21 years. Been married 21 years. Guess what? Still dating. But they do this every single week. They take the time out to date each other. To woo-woo each other. 
Jeffrey Osborne ain't the only one woo woo wooing. <laughs> they woo wooing each other. It's important, man. Why? Because they don't want to be that institution that people have looked at for years and then crumbled and disappeared. Why? Because they thought they arrived. To continue position motion in our personal family lives, we need a track to run on. We need a track to run on, man. That's why we talked about that gratefulness. That's mm -hmm. your track. Mm -hmm. That vision, that's your track. Mm -hmm. You, you want to know what you can run on? Write the vision of your family. What are you guys supposed to do? What, what, what have you been placed here to present to the earth? We didn't just get married to each other because we thought each other was fine. I married her because I thought she was fine. <laughs> her, on the other hand, was I found out I won't even her type. <laughs> so I don't even know what that was about. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, but listen. That, that was funny, wasn't it? Real, but it's a that's your track, man. Write that thing out. What's what were you placed here to do? We were placed here, man, to help families. We were placed here, in particularly for blended families, because guess what? It can be a little messy. Mm -hmm. In the blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman. Why? Because it can be a little messy. Thanks, Jamie. It could be a little messy. You guys don't, this particular family dynamic right here can be a little messy because you got in-laws and in-laws. <laughs> you got uh, sister-in-laws and sister-in-laws, brother-in-laws and brother-in-laws. You got nieces and nieces and nephews and nephews and uncles and uncles and all these other different things, not just the, the nucleus, but now you got extended. It could be a little messy. There's a whole lot that comes with a blended family. And let me go back to say, and Jamie is uh, the host from the radio station that we do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, <laughs> we know, gotta make, we gotta no, make we, that clear. Thanks, babe. We, we know a couple of Jamie's. We know some Jamie's. Yeah, we know a couple of Jamie's. So that, that so was a shout out. Yeah. That, clear. that was a shout, that was a shout out, out to her. To, Jamie that, from the radio station. She she gave me that it could be that, it could be a little messy. Yeah. She gave me that. So, so I, I, I did that as a shout out to her. So thanks, babe. I, I appreciate that. It's like Facebook when you're playing music behind yourself. You gotta say, "I don't own the rights to that. <laughs> I didn't own the rights to that. That was that was hers. I, she gave me that. You know, I own it now, but she gave it to me. So I just like I always like to shout out that little piece to him. But man, continue to position yourself without continual growth and progress. Such words as improvement, achievement, and success have no meaning. Read that again, baby. Without continual growth and progress, such words as improvement, achievement, and success have no meaning. They have no meaning. Keep going. Life is growth. If we stop growing, technically and spiritually, we are as good as dead. Man, if we stop growing, that's why we that, that's that's why we talk so much because we're watering. Mm -hmm. Seed time and harvest. You plant seed, then there comes a harvest. But in the midst of that seed, time and harvest, there's time. Mm -hmm. And time is when you water the seed for the harvest. Time is when you take care of the growth for the harvest. Because mm -hmm. there are certain crops and there are certain uh, uh Plants and there are certain trees that grow that need specific attention in the growing process before the harvest takes place. Mm -hmm. Because if not, the weed will choke it out. Right. And so that's a time when that's we're watering, man. We're always talking, bouncing ideas off, off each other, always thinking about the next move. Uh, what should we be doing? Making sure that we're not just doing things, but we're doing things that, that are specifically designed to our purpose. Because too many of y'all just busy. Y'all just busy doing nothing. 
Busyness doesn't equate to success. I don't care what type of financial uh, reward you think comes along with it. It doesn't mean you're successful. It just means you're busy. Apostle says it like this. We don't judge the success of our ministry by its assets. We judge the success of the ministry by what? Transform lives. By the transform lives of the people. We don't judge the, watch this. We don't judge the success of In the Blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman by how many books we sell. We don't judge the success of In the Blender with Brandon and Madeline Hyman by how many views we get. Because we've had thousands of views. We've had hundreds of views. We don't judge the success of this by those things. We judge the success of this by how many families come back to us and say, man, we heard a word. Mm -hmm. We watched your program and we instituted this. Mm -hmm. We saw you guys and we tweaked this and we changed that and we started doing this and we started doing that and now our marriage is on top. That's how we judge the success of this. Because the same people that's who hur, hur, hur right now will be the same people later on that will that may say stone you. And so if you're so caught up by all of that and you're not thinking about lives changing, we, we, we judge this by our families. Our families' lives being better. Our families wanting to live a better life by what they see us. We understand that's important. This, this is this bigger than us. This thing is so much bigger than us. And so, man, we want to encourage you guys, listen, stay focused, stay locked in, stay tuned in. I mean, go for it without any reservation. If you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do? If you knew you could not fail, man, what would you do? What would you do? Some of you guys just need to start just attempting some things. I'm going to attempt this. Why? Because you can't fail. And watch this. And if by some chance it don't work, at least you, at least you attempt it. There's a better feeling that comes along with attempt, attempting than being frozen in fear. Because you don't even know if you haven't even tried. I don't know if you can do it or not if you don't try. And watch this. And then what I love about what I just said is try don't even exist. Did you know try was a made up word? Try is a made up word. What, do you, what is he talking about? All things are possible to them that believe. Not to them that try. All things are possible to them that believe. That's good. So when you start saying try, that's made up. That, that was a made up word to keep you from believing. Man, you believe, guess what? You can do it. You believe you can have it. You believe it's yours. This is not no just hoorah pump up phrase statement. It's actual. What you believe you can have is yours. You just got to believe it. All things are possible. If you believe you're a success, all things are possible for you to be a success. If you believe you're a failure, guess what? All things are possible for you to be a failure. All things are possible yeah. to them that believe. Yeah. To the man that believes that he is success and the man that believes he isn't, they both are usually correct. Y'all both right. Mm -hmm. If you believe you're a dominator, you're right. If you believe you're not a dominator, you're right. You control that narrative. Nobody else controls that narrative but you. Oh, baby, oh, we're we out, out of time. time. But we're not out of message. Sweetheart, how can they get in contact with us? Uh, you can reach us uh, via email at weareablendedfamily at gmail.com or our website in theblenderministries.com. Also tune in on Thursday nights from 8 to 9 p.m. on WJMS Radio. 
And you can also catch us on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud for replays as well. Again, our email is weareablendedfamily at gmail.com. Our website is in the blender ministries.com and catch us on when on Thursday nights from Thursday 8 nights. to 9 p.m. on WJMS Radio, iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. And listen, guys, we love your emails. We love your questions. So feel free. Listen, drop us a line. Uh, shoot us an a, a, a email. You know, if there's anything you want to know in particular about the Blended Family that we can yes. pick up on a later broadcast, please feel free to do that. We want to make sure that we are here to assist you in this choice that you've made to be a success. We love you guys. We thank you for tuning in to In the Blended with Brandon and Madeline Hyman. And until next time, bye-bye. Bless.